In this lesson, we're going to learn how to define environment variables inside .env file and then access them inside our JavaScript code. So in order to make some environment variables available for our client code, we have to prefix variable name with the word vid, like this. Let's just test it out. I'm going to define one environment variable with the name vid title. And then let's open up our JavaScript code. And right here, when we are assigning text to our title, let's reference environment variable vid underscore title. We are doing so by using dot env object, like this. And sure enough, in browser, we're going to see the value of that environment variable. All right, I'm gonna go back to my env file and change variable value to something more meaningful. And the way it works is as follows. If we're gonna take a look at the content of the title.js module that was handled by Vit before sending it back to the browser, we can see that Vit has created this object with the list of all environment variables available in our client code, which also includes that variable Vit underscore title. So one more time, in order to make some environment variables defined inside .env file available for client code, we have to prefix variable names with word vid. Next, let's assume that we're going to store build assets of our project on completely separate server, but currently all build assets are stored in the same project inside the build folder. So let's pretend that on production we're going to store our assets on a different server. And now in my local I'm going to simulate such situation when I'm going to make a copy of this build folder and then move this copy inside the project root. And then I'm going to remove CSS and JavaScript files from the original build folder. But it's important to keep manifest.json in here even though we're going to move build assets to a different location. And once again, this location can be on the absolute different server on the web. Just for demonstration purposes, I have moved my assets to the project root, which is still different location, so we can kind of assume that the assets has been moved to a different server. And now I'm gonna rename the copy of the build folder I have just moved inside project root. Let's call it build. And from here I'm gonna remove manifest.json because we already have this file in the original build folder, which is inside of public folder. So now the goal is to make Laravel reference assets in a different location. Of course, for now it is not going to work because Laravel is still trying to fetch these assets from the original location, which of course it cannot find them because we have removed them from this location. So to pretend that I'm gonna move assets to another server, I'm going to use Node.js package called HTTP server, which is basically going to start development server on my local. And I'm gonna use flag global to install this server globally in order to run development server from any location on my operating system. Right after installation process is finished, we can verify that the HTTP server has been installed by running which HTTP server. And if we're gonna get the pass to this utility, that means we have successfully installed the server. Next, in order to serve any folder by using this server, we're gonna run the following command. So I'm gonna switch over to the terminal run HTTP server and specify dot as one argument, which is the root of our Laravel project. And if we're gonna use this address in the browser, sure enough, we're gonna see all the files and folders of our project. So that means that we can also reach our build folder that we have moved inside project root by using this server. And now the only thing we have to do to make Laravel fetch assets from a different location by using a different server is to add a special environment variable inside .env file called asset URL. And this variable is used to specify the host where our assets is going to be fetched from. And with any luck, if we're gonna reload the page in the browser, we can see that our assets have been fetched successfully and the host was changed because we have added that asset URL variable in our .env file. There is only one problem with the title. It is not shown for some reason. 
and if we'll take a look in the console, we're gonna see this course error. That is because browser is blocking JavaScript file fetched from the different server. So we're gonna have to add another HTTP response header with the following name access control allow origin to the request that fetches our JavaScript file. The HTTP server we are using has an option called course to avoid that error. So we have to use this option when running HTTP server. After this, as we can see, course are enabled. And in the browser, after page refresh, we see the title and the HTTP response header with the name access control allow origin has been added to this list of headers. So this is how we can store generated JavaScript in CSS files on a completely separate server. For example, on some CDN server. And right after I'm going to remove this asset URL environment variable, assets will be fetched from the default location of the same server.